W. Marku is licensed by the Department of Business Oversight under the California Residential Mortgage Lender Act, NMLS ID 237926. Also licensed in Arizona, 0941504, Florida, 76508, Georgia, 69178, Illinois, 031.0058339, Nevada, 57237, Oregon, Tennessee, 184373, Texas, Washington, 237926. Heidi Cycle Points, DBO, 1666881, Arizona, 101648. She's a mortgage mom. She can get things done. When you're in need and don't know where to go, pick up the phone and call mom. All right, welcome to Mortgage Mom Radio. I'm Debbie Marcoux, and this is my home buyer workshop. I don't even know what number it's on. I've stopped counting at this point. Uh, but we are working on home buyer education, and I'm going to be bringing you closing costs today. Closing costs are a huge part of the transaction, one that many buyers get very confused by. They have no idea what to expect. They hear, oh, I need 3.5% down for FHA. Oh, I need 2% down you know, for this or 0% down for VA. That's my favorite one. Well, I, I'm a veteran. It's zero down. I, I understand, but there's closing costs. So we want to make sure that we have everybody educated, understanding, and knowing exactly what they need uh, to have available in addition to whatever down payment might be required for their loan program. Okay, so uh, we're going to jump right into closing costs. Make sure that you guys are there, you're ready, and you're prepared. I'm going to be talking to Matt the whole time, so Matt might have to put his uh, mic on so he can talk back to me. Um, but we are going to make sure he's going to actually move the closing cost estimate around for me as I'm talking about numbers. So the first thing I do want to do, though, before we jump into that is, number one, if you guys haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, it really does help our algorithm. It, we, it gets more people to see it. It gets YouTube to put it up in front of people. When they're searching, how do I buy a home? What do I need to buy a home? Zero down payments, whatever they might be searching, uh, we may actually start coming up if we can get enough likes and subscribes. So please subscribe to the channel. Please turn on the notification bell. That way you know when we do come on. We are live every single Wednesday at five, unless it is a holiday. Holidays, we do go dark, um, but we are here and we're very consistent. So make sure you guys are subscribing to that channel. If you're watching the video, please give us a thumbs up. We'd really appreciate that as well because the more likes that we can get on the video, uh, the better also that the video does. So please, if you wouldn't mind doing that for us, that'd be great. Uh, so a couple things, how do you guys contact us? Cause I know you're going to have questions about this closing cost video. Uh, you guys are going to text the word mom to three, six, two, six, zero. That's text mom, M O M. Doesn't matter if you do it forward or back, it spells the same way, to 36260. That's going to send you our phone app. You're going to download that. All you have to do is click on the link you get from your text message and go ahead and save that to your home screen. And there you are. You've got every tool that you need at the tip of your fingers. The most the, the tool in that phone app that I like the best is the calculator. It will run FHA, VA, conventional, USDA. It'll run all of the different loan programs for you. It will insert the PMI insurance, which is not something that most people know how to calculate. And so that really is my favorite part of the process. But in that phone app, you can actually contact us. So if you have it, you've got the email, email me button. You can actually email me, Debbie, Heidi, um, Carrie, Cindy, Heather, Larry, you can really email any of us. So it's it's all there. It's in the phone app and it's an easy way to contact us. You can call us from the phone app. You can send me an email from the phone app. Uh, just a really nice, easy way for you to contact us. And um, you guys can also go to uh, Facebook. A lot of people like to watch us through Facebook. Maybe that's your favorite social media platform. So you can definitely watch us through Facebook if you prefer that over YouTube. And we are on our podcast. So every single show that we do once a week that airs on radio does go to podcast as well. So if you are just really loving uh, podcasts and you like to listen to those, you like to download them and, and kind of, you know, listen to them as you go, uh, anywhere at all that you like to listen to podcasts, you can find us. So everywhere that you search Mortgage Mom Radio, we will come up, whether that is through Google or our website, mortgagemomradio.com. Uh, you will find us though. You can always give us a call. It's 844-935-3634. And hey, if you guys find these videos uh, delightful, educational, um, you know, just anything that might be uh, positive for you, we would really love it if you guys would go to Google or Yelp to give us a review. That also definitely helps us, you know, keep bringing these to you and it helps us get out to more and more people um, so they can see the good that we're doing for you. So anyway, let's move on and let's get right into this closing costs because it's uh, a, a very, very important part of the process, one that a lot of people don't understand. And again, if you're listening to us on radio on Saturday morning, if you guys were following along on 
Wednesdays when we're live or going to our Home Buyer Workshop 2021 playlist, you would actually be able to see me doing this with the uh, PowerPoint right in front of you. So that way you wouldn't be missing out on information. We're going to go through a lot of numbers with the closing cost estimate. And it's something that if you guys are listening, you might be able to follow along, but you'd probably do better by actually seeing the video. So if you haven't already, go over to YouTube, go to Mortgage Mom Radio. All you have to do is search Mortgage Mom Radio on YouTube. We will come up, find our home buyer workshop 2021. Um, uh, playlist. And then you're going to look for our closing cost episode. And that way you can actually watch this and follow along with that estimate in front of you. So very important. Um, so let's get started. So I've got on the screen right here, big and red, it says, maybe you need a seller credit. So that is something that you do want to think about if you've got your money saved for your down payment, but you don't have quite enough money for the closing costs, you can ask the seller to cover those for you. You can negotiate as part of your contract to get a credit from the seller for closing costs. Now, one thing to keep in mind right now with the market being really hot, we talked about it in our show a couple weeks back is, you know, right now it's very competitive to get an offer accepted. So right now it is a seller's market at the moment, which means that the seller is getting overpriced for the home, not typically paying closing costs. Some of them are selling them as is. Don't even ask us after your physical inspection to fix anything. If you don't like it, get out. We'll sell it to somebody else that's willing to buy it that way. So that just happens to be the market that we're in today. But this is not a normal market. This is not normal. This is not typical. This is not what we see all of the time. Eventually, at some point down the road, things will start to level off a little bit. There will be some more inventory hit the market. No, I do not think that we're going to see an absolute major market market crash, but I do think that we're going to see some more inventory, which will slow things down. It will give you more of a Ability to negotiate with that seller. Uh, one way that I am seeing clients get closing cost credits right now with their transactions is by offering more than what the home is worth to get their closing costs covered. So that is something that, again, you're going to want to talk to a real estate agent about. You're going to want to determine what is your best way to go at the, um, you know, at the negotiations. That's where your real estate agent comes into play. They're going to help you come up with the very best strategies to get that offer, um, you know, accepted by the seller and get you those closing costs if you need them. Now, if you don't need them, um, then how much money do you need to save, right? How much more money do you need than your down payment amount? On average, what is standard, very, very easy to calculate and usually works out to be maybe a little bit less, um, sometimes a little bit more, and it depends on that sales price, but about 2% of your sales price is on average what you'll see in closing costs. So if you buy a home uh, for $500,000, you're gonna see about 10 grand that you're gonna need in closing costs. This is assuming that everything is happening. You are including your taxes in your monthly payment, you're including your mortgage and uh, your homeowner's insurance in your mortgage, and then you've also got all of your escrow and title fees. Um, so you know that's assuming that you're doing those extra pieces, which means we've gotta fund the escrow account, we're gonna get into all of that when I bring that estimate up um, and walk you through that. But you know, the, the biggest mistake, and I have this on my screen, is the biggest mistake that you can make is to start looking at homes without the understanding of how much that you will need to close the transaction. It is not just your closing costs. It, it's not just your down payment. You've got those closing costs too, and they are in addition to. So again, keep that in mind. It's about 2% of your sales price. So if you're doing an FHA loan with three and a half percent down, you really need about five and a half percent to get into that house. So we're going to move on to the next piece. And uh, Matt's going to go ahead and bring that up for me, the, the spreadsheet. We're going to jump right in. I'm going to do two different Work, uh, worksheets today for you that I want you to be able to see and walk through with me. The first one is an illustration of an FHA loan and um, it's a $400,000 sales price. So I feel like that's a really good price. Really, um, you know, I feel like that's a very average price. Like um, maybe Los Angeles, maybe uh, Orange County, maybe 400,000 is not uh necessarily average for a single family home, but condominiums, townhomes, and, you know, some of the uh, smaller uh, properties, maybe a little bit older single family homes. Yes, you can totally do that. But uh, Riverside, San Bernardino, you know, all my Inland Empire peeps out there, you guys, 400,000 is absolutely doable. You can definitely find a property for that. Um, so it's just a good place. I think uh, across the country with all of the different licenses that I have in all the different states, I think 400,000 is a great price for me to bring you these numbers. So that's where we're going to go. Um, Matt, do you have any way to move my face up out of the closing cost 
Yeah, I, I mean, it's going to be in the way as we scroll. Do you want me to just take you off while we're on this document? Uh, yeah, that's probably a good idea because I want them to be able to see what's going on. So you guys aren't actually looking at me, which is cool because now I can pick my teeth and my nose. Um, anyway, so... <laughs> All right, so here we go. So your origination charge and or lender fees, sixteen ninety. dollars So uh, this is the number that your bank is going to charge you for your processing fees. You'll see it set up as processing, underwriting, funding, um, just the, the different small fees that you'll see come up on your loan application um, that they're charging you to do the loan. So if you can notice on the screen, there's actually a big dark line um, that it's, it's kind of bolded out and it's underneath of your credit or charge points for the specific interest rate chosen. So that is the second line down. Everything under that bolded line is not something that the bank or the mortgage company is charging you that they are that they are charging you to do the loan. They are charges um, below that are from third party invoices that are gonna come in on your transaction. So um, the 1690 is truly what the bank makes on your loan. And then we move forward from there. Anything additional points, if you've heard people talk about points, should you pay points for your interest rate, buy your interest rate down, that would be in that second line that you see that says your credit or charge. So you can take a higher interest rate than what the market is um, showing you as an average cost. And if you take a higher interest rate, you'll actually get a credit versus the bank charging you points or discount fees to lower that interest rate. So that would be on that second line if there were points going to be charged from your lender. I did not put any there because I like to, I prefer to not charge points unless I have to. So many times, again, this is a FHA loan. Uh, FHA can only be done for a primary residence, um, for a purchase. So this is a purchase transaction. This is not a refinance. So we're talking purchase only in this cl closing cost estimate. I do want to make sure that you all know that refinance closing costs are absolutely different than a purchase. The, all of the closing fees that you see will still be there, but they are much, much, much discounted because it's the second time around that you're doing it. It's not a purchase. It's not brand new. No seller. There's no, you know, it's, it's just a different, different scene altogether. So um, just remember that we are talking purchase in this closing cost estimate at the moment. Um, so we get to your appraisal fee. So obviously there's an appraiser. We've got to charge charge you money to get that appraisal done. That report does have to be completed prior to closing. So we will be collecting that money from you up front in order to get that appraisal completed. Um, and that is going to run you anywhere from $450 to as much as $1,000 or $1,200. Depends on the size of the home. It depends on whether it's a rental property. It depends on... Um, you know, the price of the home, uh, is it two units, three units, four units. So depending on the property type will determine the cost of the appraisal, but most appraisals are going to be between like 450 and $600. Um, so I went on a little high side and I put 550 in there, your credit report fee. We're going to charge you for your credit report. We're going to only pull it one time if that's all that we need to do, but we are only going to charge you for the invoice that does come in at the end of the transaction. So if I pull your credit report once, and then we decide that we want to try to rescore the credit report, get you a little bit higher credit score. You're going to pay off some credit card debt. You're going to send me some bank, um, some statements to show me that your balance is better. And I'm going to send it in for a rescore to get that credit score up, get you a better interest rate. Well, guess what? There's cost um, from the credit company for that. And it'll be part of an invoice. If we have to order a credit supplement, so I do pull your credit report, we're getting you ready. You just paid off your car loan a month ago. It hasn't shown up on there yet. It doesn't show me that it's been paid off. Then I'm going to have to order what's called a credit supplement from the credit company. And the credit company is going to charge me additional money for that credit supplement. So on average, standard, I see about $75 per file in credit fees is what I typically see uh, per loan. So that's why I put that number in there. Sometimes it's $36. If you're one single person with one credit report pull and we didn't have to do anything else, you, you might be cheap. Um, and I've seen it as high as $150 or $250 if we've had to do a rescore on all three bureaus for multiple credit card accounts. So it really does depend on what we're going to do with credit. But again, everything below that first bold line 
are invoices that we receive. They are not charges that the lender is charging you. We are being charged that, so we are passing the fee on to you. Now, everything below the credit report fee is 100% third party as well. So we have the flood certification fee, so we do have to run a report to determine whether or not you're in a flood zone. Um, if we need to, for your particular loan, um, run a an IRS transcript, the IRS will actually charge us a fee that uh, we typically see as $20. Not every single loan requires a transcript, so sometimes you'll see it and sometimes you won't. I am doing this showing you guys every fee that could possibly come up on a $400,000 FHA purchase so that you can understand what each fee is for and how things might change along the way. Or maybe they change from one lender to the next. Some lenders will literally charge the $1,690, but they will not charge the flood cert, the IRS transcript fee, um, the VOE fee. So those three things might be rolled into their 1690. Maybe their 1690 is 1290, but then they've got an additional fee that they add to. So it really depends. Every lender will be a little bit different, but this gives you a very, very good understanding of the closing costs and what to anticipate. So again, if you guys have questions right now that you want to ask, and I know that you do, and I know that you wish you guys were watching us do it live on Wednesday, number one, if you're watching us do it live, go ahead and put your questions into the feed right now. If you're not watching us live, we do monitor our YouTube channel. So feel free to go ahead and put a question down below, and we will answer that question for you even at a later date, no matter when it is that you scroll upon this video. Or hey, why don't you send me an email? So you can send me an email. Go to the website, mortgagemomradio.com, click contact us, and you can shoot an email over. If you've got the phone app, go ahead and hit email me and ask me questions. I'd love it, and I'm more than happy to answer them for you. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to keep going. So um, the VOE fee. So if you work for a company that will not do the verification of employment themselves, they don't have an HR that's going to do that verification, they will charge us a VOE fee if we have to go through the work number. So if your company does not use the work number to verify your employment and verify your income, then we're not going to charge you that fee. So again, we're only going to charge you fees that are invoiced to us. If we don't get an invoice, we don't charge you the money. Um, mortgage insurance. So sometimes it's the, uh, an FHA loan. You'll always see that line is zero. Um, that's not true. I'm going to actually back that up. FHA loans, the majority of the time, that loan is gonna, that line is going to be zero. An FHA loan, you can finance the mortgage insurance, which most people do. They're getting an FHA loan because 3.5% down is all that they could scrape together and come up with. It was the cheapest way to get into a home. FHA is a fantastic product. Absolutely no problem whatsoever with somebody barely scraping it together. The fact that you've done that, you've taken the leap, and you're moving into home ownership is amazing. So pat yourself on the back. But do you want to come out of pocket with that one and three quarter percent of your loan amount with the money up front for that FHA premium? Probably not. So the majority of our clients are going to finance that mortgage insurance upfront fee. But if you did want to pay it out in cash because you didn't want to finance it and you don't want to add it to your loan balance, it would be on that line there where it says mortgage insurance. You're more than well, you're more than willing to do that or welcome to do that. Um, so the settlement service. So this is also called an escrow fee in California. Um, if you are in a, uh, sometimes it could be shown uh, differently. It'll be settlement service if you're in um, a title state or if you're an attorney state, it's not going to be escrow. But if you're in California, you're going to hear everybody talk about that escrow company. That is your settlement fee. So that no matter what, there's somebody third party that's running the transaction, no matter what state that you are located in. Um, but the settlement fee is the cost for that third party that is doing that um, additional work as that median person in the in-between. So um, more uh, settlement fee. For a $400,000 purchase, this is about right. Um, it's usually about $2 per thousand with a two or $300 base. Um, so that would be $800 plus 300 for the base. And that puts you at that $1,100 mark. So that is about right for the, uh, for the escrow company. So that would be your settlement fee. The next thing that you're going to see is the owner's title insurance. The owner's title insurance, 99% of the time in the state of California, which is different in other states. But again, I'm referencing that since that is where I'm sitting and doing the majority of the loans um, that we work on. So, or we do a lot of loans actually a ton of loans in Georgia and Texas. And it's actually, I've seen it be very common there as well, very similar to California. So the majority of the time, the owner's title insurance is paid for by the seller, but it could be paid for by the buyer, which means that I still have to show it to you. I have to disclose it to you, but then I can actually credit you for the 
credit from the seller by covering that cost. So I'm gonna actually show you that as we get lower down in the spreadsheet where I'm giving you that credit from the seller to cover that fee. What is owner's title insurance? We'll go back to some of our other episodes right here on Mortgage Mom Radio. We talk all about uh, uh, owner's title insurance, lender's title insurance. We had a title insurance rep on, we had Joe Pena with Clearmark Title, talked all about what uh, mortgage insurance is all about, um, title insurance is all about. We also had, um, if you want to know more about escrow, we had Jennifer Davidson on who talked all about escrow and what an escrow company does. So you can go back to previous episodes. I think those were, they were kind of closer to the beginning of the year, weren't they, Matt? Didn't we do those like January ish? Yeah, I thought or they was it might end have been of before year? the, yeah, I think it was uh, towards Maybe the Maybe December, end of, yeah. sometime in December. So, um, but they're there. So just, just search for them, go through all of our different episodes, but we've definitely got an escrow episode. And if you actually have that phone app and you go to our loans uh, 101 on the phone app, uh, that those escrow and title um, episodes were actually part of that wor- that series, isn't it, Matt, that you had put on the website? Yeah. So, um, so you guys can definitely, if you need to understand, uh, what those companies are doing or what it's for, uh, those would be great episodes for you to watch. So now we're going to go down to lenders title insurance and Matt. Yeah, you can start scrolling up. Awesome. So lenders title insurance, uh, again, something that you guys can learn all about in the title episode. So go to our website and check out our home buyer workshop list. And it's one of the episodes in, you know, there it's also on YouTube. Obviously you can keep watching, looking for it, but, um, lenders title insurance, that is something that you do pay for as the buyer. And, um, that on a $400,000 loan on average would be about that $1,157. And it is required, uh, in order for you to to get your loan as a lender or a mortgage company or a mortgage bank, we are going to require that you get that lender's insurance. That is uh, making sure that we are covered uh, should liens and things come up against the title that might try to push us out of first position. That's not going to happen. We don't want that to happen. Um, so we are going to require that you have that policy. So uh, next would be endorsements. And I see this a lot of times. It depends on the title company, whether or not they're going to charge Um, you for an endorsement. What is an endorsement? Basically, if you think about your car insurance, it's the easiest way to explain it. If you have a loan on your car, the, the company that has the loan requires that they are written as an endorsement on your car insurance policy. So not only are they covered, but you're covered, you know, everybody's covered in case you get an accident and you've got that loan outstanding. So it's the same thing for the title insurance for the lender. The lender is going to require that we have endorsements from the title insurance company. The title insurance company may charge us money to be, to endorse the mortgage company. So I put that on there again. I'm trying to give you guys a worst case scenario to see it all and to understand what these charges might be if you see them come up on your settlement statement. Um, next thing is a notary. So I've got it in at $175. I can tell you that on average, what I've been seeing most recently is about 250. Uh, they have gotten more expensive recently due to a uh, COVID and, um, the notary is doing a lot of traveling, going to you, less people going in to an actual escrow office to sign their documents for closing. Um, I'm seeing more expensive notaries taking place. So, um, I'm seeing more on average about 250, but 175 is what I had there back in December. And I've just kind of seen them kind of bump up. So keep that in the back of your mind a little bit as, um, we're working through this worksheet. So next thing is, uh, you've got a loan tie-in fee. This is, um, basically a fee that I see many times that the, uh, title company or the escrow company, one or the two, you can see it on both ends might charge you for basically, um, doing all of the paperwork to make sure that when the loan is recorded against the title of your home, that your, um, you know, that they're, they're recording all of that all of that information all in one. They're just kind of like, I don't know, they're doing extra paperwork. I call it a junk fee, garbage fee, um, but you'll see it on almost every transaction. So anticipate that you're going to pay for it. Um, So, okay. So next one, Uh, we've got the recording of the deed. So we need to get that recorded against the title of the home. We've got your um, recording of the mortgage. So we've got to make sure that that gets recorded against the home. So the uh, county is going to charge us money to record those uh, documents in order for you to become the owner of the home. And then there will be county transfer taxes and sometimes there will be city transfer taxes. So I did this actually um, based on uh, zip code in Los Angeles County. And uh, the transfer taxes are typically on average paid for again by the seller. So as we go down lower into the uh, worksheet, I'm gonna show you where I gave you the credit that the seller is paying for the uh, owner's title and for those county 
uh, transfer taxes. So, but these are all of the closing costs that you would see um, that are non-recurring closing costs. So what does that mean? They come up one time. They are not a cost of homeownership. They are not a recurring charge that you will see on an ongoing basis, even after you own the home. Okay. So these are, if you look at this, it's a $400,000 property and I'm estimating that your closing costs are going to be about 6931. So that is in your non-recurrable or non-reoccurring closing costs. Okay. So now we're going to move into your recurring closing costs. What does that mean? That is your cost of homeownership. That is your interest for the loan. That is your taxes. That is your insurance. That is your impounds. That is your escrows. And again, if you don't know what those are, go back to a, an earlier workshop where um, start with the very first one where I do buzzwords and I explain to you what escrow is for your payment, not escrow for the company that's going to close your loan. Um, so start over, go from scratch. But um, you know, Matt, let's scroll up a little bit so that they can see that whole section there. So it's approximate cost of prepaid interest. You're good. And escrow reserves. So this is, um, if you close, I've got it at 15 days. So the best way to explain it is if you close on March 15th, you're going to have 15 or 16 days, depending on how many days are in the month of prepaid interest that you will pay through the end of that month, because now you own that home and you owe interest on that loan for the rest of the days of that month. Remember that a mortgage is always paid in the rears. You're always paid backwards. So we're going to catch you up to the first of the following month. So now we've talked about March 15th. So on April 1st, you're not going to make a payment. You are going to skip April. You will make your first payment in May. Well, what happened? You got 30 days behind. So when you own a home, it is different than when you rent a property. When you rent a property, you pay on the first and then you move in on the first and you live there for 30 days, and then you pay again on the first, and you live there for another 30 days. With a mortgage, you actually live in the property for the 30 days, and then you pay the interest. So we are, through the closing of the loan, going to true you up through the month that you are in, whether that is the fifth of the month and we've got to charge you for 25 days or whether that is the 25th of the month and I have to charge you for five days. But I'm going to get you to the end of that month so I've got your interest all trued up and then you are going to skip a mortgage payment and start again 30 days later. So that is your reoccurring, a reoccurring cost because your interest is going to occur for the next 30 years of your loan if you take a 30-year loan. So just keep that in mind your hazard insurance premium. So we've got to make sure that we're collecting upfront for your homeowner's policy. We need 12 months paid up front. $400,000 property. I see on average about $1,000, 1,020 I've got on this spreadsheet uh, for your annual uh, home uh, hazard insurance or homeowner's insurance or fire insurance, whatever your area state likes to use the term. Um, but recently, again, if you're in California, I've actually seen these starting to go up because of all of the recent fires that we had. We're starting to see um, the, the fire insurance policies get more expensive. So $400,000 property, this instead of $1,000 might be $1,200. But if you're living in an area that doesn't have a lot of fire, this would be a very typical number. If you're living in a state um, like, uh, let me see, what's one that I've done that's really good? Tennessee, their homeowner's insurance is not very expensive. If you're in Texas, your homeowner's insurance is not going to be $1,000 on $400,000. It's going to be $1,600 on $400,000. So it does depend on the area where you live and what are the common costs of that insurance policy. But this is a great kind of median number that I put in here. Um, your taxes. So we do have to make sure that we're collecting taxes and that we're getting enough established into that impound or escrow account so that from the time that you make your first payment, so the, the example that I just gave you, close your loan March 15th, we make a first payment May 1st, right? So if you make your first payment May 1st, you've got May, June, July, August, September, and October. You've got six months that you can make payments before your November tax bill is due. And we need to have two months in your impound account. So in that situation, we're going to actually collect um, probably three or four months at the most. If you're closing your loan in September and your first payment is not due until November, but there's a tax bill due in November, we're going to collect the full six months plus the two or three months for your um, for your cushion, and we're gonna end up actually taking about nine months from you. So it really does depend. This section is a reoccurring cost. When are your tax bills due? How much do your taxes cost you? When is the next, next bill actually due and payable? So how much do we have to collect up front to make sure that we have enough in the account to get it paid? So this is going to change quite drastically 
from month to month based on when you actually close on your loan, um, which again is why I say the average cost is about 2% of your sales price. If it's a $400,000 property, 2% is eight grand. But you can see right here that in this estimate that I did, the total approximate cost of the prepaid, the reoccurring expenses was 2633. So our total of all costs is 9564. So you're saying, well, you just went over your 2%. I did, but I gave you a credit for those fees that I told you that the seller's gonna cover for you most of the time typically. And you want to make sure if you're out there looking at homes and writing contracts, you're talking to your realtor about that. Make sure you are specific. Hey, am I going to pay that owner's title policy? Am I going to pay those county or city transfer taxes? Make sure that you know. Um, it's very, very important because it will be different than what I'm showing you on this estimate today. So if we go down to the box on the left-hand side, so Matt, pull up the grid so that we, or the worksheet. Yeah, there you go. So we can see the whole, the boxes. So if you look at the, um, worksheet on the left-hand side, it says approximate total of funds needed to close. So you can see that our purchase price or total liens is 403,535. How did we get higher than the 400,000 sales price that we actually started with? Well, you put your three and a half percent down payment. So you should have come out, come down, right? There should have been less money. You should have owed less. Well, we also finance the mortgage insurance fee. So there's some numbers that are moving around in there that are changing what the actual total amount is of what we need to finance. Um, but your total purchase price is 403,535. So that is the 400,000 that you purchased the property for and um, additional costs that have gone on top of that. So we have the uh, loan amount at 392,755. Well, that doesn't necessarily add up either. And again, something that we're gonna go through together one-on-one -on -one if I was doing this loan with you and we'd break those numbers down specifically so you could get to the right numbers. Um, you've got your borrower's closing costs paid by the seller, the $1,474. That is the amount of the owner's title policy and that is the amount of the county transfer taxes that I told you up top was most likely paid for by the seller. So I've given you a credit to cover that. Now you've got your mortgage insurance fee that I told you guys was not up front. It was not at the top because you aren't buying it out or paying for it in full up front. It is down at the bottom because you are financing it. So that is getting rolled in. If you take your 400,000 sales price, subtract your three and a half percent, add your one and three quarters for your upfront mortgage insurance premium from FHA, you're gonna get to that total loan amount of the 392. Um, so that is not a fee to you, it is being financed, but that is still something that I have to show you. You've got your, um, a cl your closing costs that we broke down up top, top, the very, very top box was 6931. The middle box was the 2633. And now we've got your total out of pocket at 25,625. So the amount of your actual closing costs came out to be less than 9,564 by the 1474 that is being offset by the seller. So what did that actually make your total closing costs? About $8,100. And that is why I told you when we started this that on average, you're gonna pay about 2% of your sales price in closing costs. So it's, I really hope that this helped. There's a lot to this. There's a lot of things that are going on. And I just think that sometimes if you can watch it over and over again, you guys can stop it, pause it, re-listen to what I said, rewind, hear me say it again. Sometimes it might help just to understand what is going on, what are you paying for, why are you paying for it, and how much should you be budgeting for when you want to buy that house. So I think that this is a, a great um, place to stop. We're probably right about, uh, I don't know, where do you think we're at, Matt? How long have we gone? Uh, 34 minutes. Or about 34 minutes. So I was going to go into the conventional one. I don't want to do that right now. I think that that's too much for this work workshop. I will do another one that is conventional separately by itself and show you one more closing cost worksheet. We'll do closing cost part one, closing cost part two. But again, if you guys have any questions whatsoever that you want to ask me, please feel free. Text the word mom to 36260. You can get the phone app. You guys can send me an email. You can call me from the phone app. Go to the website, mortgagemomradio.com. Com, click the contact us, send me a message, or give us a call at the office. It's 844 935 
3634. Again, if you felt like this was um, very educational and it helped you out a lot, please give us a thumbs up on the video. Please subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notifications so that you know when we do go live, when we upload it, the next workshop, closing cost number two. Uh, we want you guys to be around. We want your help. We really appreciate it very much. And um, we'll be back again next week with, uh, we'll do closing cost number two. So we hope you guys have a good one. We'll talk to you later. Debbie Marcoux is licensed by the Department of Business Oversight under the California Residential Mortgage Lender Act, NMLS ID 237926. Also licensed in Arizona, 0941504, Florida, 76508, Georgia, 69178, Illinois, 031.0058339, Nevada, 57237, Oregon, Tennessee, 184373, Texas, Washington, 237926. Heidi Cycle Points, DBO, 1666881, Arizona, 101648. She's a mortgage mom. She can get things done. When you're in need and don't know where to go Pick up the phone and call mom <laughs>